Hey everyone, welcome to the Rich Teeth Podcast. This week brought to you by Gus. I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. <laughs> I'm Andrew. <laughs> there you go. I'm Barbara. <laughs> and a special Whoa. shout out to our sponsor, Gus. Hey everyone, how are you doing? <laughs> Wow, Gus, Why thank not? you for Fuck sponsoring it. this episode. Yeah, wow, so how generous. Much, how much do you pay for sponsoring this video? Uh, nothing. <laughs> oh, man. Little little backdoor That's deal. Little backdoor shenanigans. Special rate. <laughs> I don't go in for these backdoor shenanigans. Who gets the commission? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. If there's, if you, if there's a zero dollar sale, it's zero dollar commission. That's the way we work. All right. The no haggle guarantee. What you, the, oh. what you see is what you pay here at Sorolla. Uh, Sorolico. <laughs> what would you name it? I think waiting. I think about that. Like, if if you were gonna name a company after yourself, like, like there's companies that have like they're just people's names. Like, what would, what if what if I had like Gusco or Sorolico? Why not? <laughs> Do it. It, 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 just, it just sounds so weird. Like until like you say it over and over, and it becomes like embedded in your head. It just sounds weird saying something like that. Gusco is a place you'd have a membership to for sure. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be very exclusive. You gotta pay. But you can't buy anything in bulk. Everything is just a singular item. <laughs> <laughs> Gusco has great hot dogs, though. You got, I mean, yeah. and they're like, oh, it's like thirty-five place? cents. Yeah, no, no, but they have a cafeteria, yeah. oh. and and it's got, or like have like a little concession yeah. stand, it's... and their hot dogs are still thirty-five cents, still yeah. like dirt cheap. They're, they're they're not foot longs though. They're ten inches. We have to cut corners <laughs> to shrink them a little bit just to keep keep the cost down. But, but yeah, that, that's. That, 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 the bun is extra big, though. The bun is still really big. He's got to eat a too, lot of bread to get to. It's too long. <laughs> That's that, like, that how, like, Delta Airlines, like, like saved a billion dollars a year by, like, cutting one cherry tomato out of the salads or whatever that, like, you know, lateral thinking move was. That's how yeah. you save money is by say, taking an inch off the foot long hot or two inches <laughs> off the foot long hot dog. Speaking of Delta Airlines, I didn't read the whole story. I read something weird about Delta Airlines, right? Right, literally right before we came on uh, to do the podcast, I had it up on my browser here. So I didn't read the whole story, but it said something like they were going to take $6.5 billion to try, you know, obviously airlines are hurting right now with, you know, less travel going on, but they were going to take $6.5 billion out of their frequent flyer program and use it to keep the airline operating for now. It's like, are you just moving money from one pocket to another to, in yeah, order to, that work? to keep the airline afloat? What What's I, the money spent on in the frequent flyer program? I, I, didn't, I didn't read the whole thing. God damn it. Delta Airlines. <laughs> I, don't, I don't entirely know what the logistics of that are, but it sounds like just a drag and drop between bank accounts. Delta will use frequent flyer program <laughs> to back $6.5 billion in debt. Uh, yeah, it's they're... like, I have this amount of my checking account, this amount of my savings. Let me just yeah. pop that but over it's like, there. But it's like Venmo. It's like, do you want it in three days? That's free. But if you want it right <laughs> now, that'll be $17 million. <laughs> so I guess but they're, they're going to take out a, 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 a $6.5 billion loans and use, use their frequent flyer program as collateral. Oh, okay. Wow. I just, okay. I guess I don't understand how there's actual money specifically in their frequent flyer program well it's tied up right it's like there's potential free flights and things that people can redeem so it's like it's potential a hit to their bottom line so i guess you're mm -hmm. right it's like it's a negative they're using a negative to borrow more <laughs> like it's, it's it's not a bonus to them right it's like a liability for them it's stuff that they have to eventually pay out it's like we have all this money we're gonna have to pay out eventually we'll use that to secure a loan would that be like me trying to like save my mortgage by Giving them my student debt? How does that even? <laughs> Obviously, yes, exactly. Student. Obviously, none of us student. are uh, our CFOs or work in the finance department, <laughs> and probably shouldn't be. No idea how well, that works. Well, here's the thing: that actually leads me to believe that it's actually not complicated. Everyone is just a fraud. That's what it makes me believe. It doesn't make me believe that we don't know, like, understand business. It makes me think that nobody does, and that it's all just witchcraft, oh. and that it's yeah. all I mean, that's just life like, in general, no right? It's yeah. like fake it till you make it kind of uh, mentality of like nobody <laughs> actually knows what we're doing uh, or well, what mean, they're doing. That's like how Enron and like pyramid schemes and Madoff and all that stuff happens, right? It's like you're just like, we don't know. They, they don't know either. Even the people yeah. sometimes who are committing fraud don't know that they're committing it. Yeah, exactly. Like, but ever, but no one wants to sound stupid or accusatory. So no one asks. Yeah, there's that, no epi one... there's that episode of The Office where they combine the branches and uh, Stanley keeps asking one of the new people. 
the one like one of the new people had been to jail for like financial fraud or something and stanley keeps asking the new guy what he went to prison for and then there's like that one-on-one -on -one interview with stanley he goes i keep asking him because what he went to prison for sounds like what i do every day at my office <laughs> 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 such a good line oh my god but also right. true so fucking raccoons they're back oh we you, did you got an issue i got raccoons again remember we had that rtaa forever ago about raccoons in my backyard uh eating my grease trap <laughs> they're back <laughs> and they're hanging Is that out what the kids call it these days <laughs> my wet ass grease trap that's the uh, name of the restaurant at uh, Gutsco. <laughs> and uh, it's w-a-g-t they're just hanging out i had to go out and yell at them look at them the fat fucks <laughs> i mean what are they doing what who are they harming look at them they're bringing rabies yeah around. they're just chilling but they're not going look at that <laughs> <laughs> they, they went out there forever they weren't moving i was flashing my lights at them i was like banging on the window at look at that. that that is so cute that is because amazing because of the resolution, it looks like a painting. Like it looks like <laughs> from like no Norman Rockwell's After Dark series or something. I love the oh. fade in and fade out of all the pictures too. It's like a Thanks. little storybook. That's, I feel like there should be like a narration. Courtesy of Gus Co. Okay, here we go. It was a Saturday evening and the raccoons had nowhere to go. <laughs> Lethargic from lack of food and heat, one of them sat up and exclaimed, we should go eat Gus's grease trap. <laughs> And then, then they decided. <laughs> then they saw where it was. Oh, then Gus what's came that out down there. <laughs> oh, All right, that's enough of that. I think I think they're amazing. I think you should name them. Do, do you think if you put up a fake Bill raccoon, do you think it would deter the real living raccoons? No, I mean look at them. They were hanging out together. Well, look, I mean they know each other though. Oh, it's like a stranger. Like, we, we don't know him. <laughs> I would, I would think that it would deter cats, but there's cats everywhere around here now. <laughs> well, I think, like, I think it's an issue in that I, I saw a tweet recently that said that uh, animals, the, the uncanny valley doesn't work on animals. What does like, that they mean? Don't oh. get, they don't get creeped out by something that kind of looks like them, which means that there's something in our... My light broke. There's something in our own evolution <laughs> that is like hard-coded in our DNA to be suspicious of stuff that looks kind of like us, but it doesn't exist in the animal kingdom. And that's At all? Like no a little animals? bit scary. I don't think so. I mean, oh. I just read it in a tweet. I, I, this is not backed by any science that I've read <laughs> apart from this one tweet. But I thought it was an interesting thought that animals will just hang out next to fake versions of themselves as if they're real. It's such yeah, a I mean, shame that raccoons are so shitty because they're so cute. And I, they're like adorable. They make fun pets, but they're, they're not they were pretty good cute. Pets. I didn't want the I, I didn't want them around because I didn't want them to be out there like when I take my dogs out or, uh, you know, to, I don't know, dig up my yard because which they are fucking doing nonstop as well, little assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Just make well, your entire like, yard zero scape. I but then I have to right in my light as I turned it on. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you did you say striking while you did it? Because if not, I mean, no, I didn't do it. It's your fault. I'm it's rusty. Your fault. <laughs> um. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just over those fucking raccoons and the cats and all the stupid animals going around my goddamn house. That's so like you need to I, put I, a, I, a stuffed raccoon out there, like with a pack of cigarettes and like a leather jacket and like a motorcycle, a real bad boy <laughs> raccoon, and then you know they'll be scared off. And we'll come around there That's a good idea. I, I guess that makes sense. Like when uh, some they they sell, like um, uh, what are they like? Almost like fake deer that you can put out. To make other deer feel more at ease, you ever see those? Yeah. Same, is same this kind of, kind of like, like how they're putting people uh, or like fake people in restaurants to make other people feel better, like we talked about before? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like... we have uncanny. Like we're we're freaked out by the uncanny valley, so it doesn't quite work for us. We just think it's weird. Yeah. Or comforting, depending on who you talk to. I don't think that's ever comforting. It's just weird. That, 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 all the mannequins and all the fucking stupid ass cardboard cutouts at baseball games. Yeah, I wonder like if that actually makes a difference for the players. Because that's that's who it's for, essentially, right? It's for the players to feel like there's an audience there and to play to a crowd. It's, but I think it might also be for the television viewer. Yeah, to make it not look so dystopian. To yeah. make it not so much <laughs> yeah. just like... This is better. <laughs> <laughs> 
Can you apply to get yourself in the crowds of, of games? Can you like send yourself? Yeah, you can do that for the <laughs> NBA for sure. Yeah. You oh, can, like, like a cardboard cutout? <laughs> yeah, well, no, they, they put screens up. And so you basically can broadcast your like webcam onto the screens they have in the stands. So like, and I think it creates like a, it's like an animated GIF. Like oh. it, so you can like record like six seconds or something or whatever. And then it just kind of like repeats that on the screens that are in the stands. So six seconds. They should call him a vine. I don't know. I don't know how long the, I don't know how long the loop is, but uh, probably, probably not, probably not long enough to get away with uh, anything too like to be like cutting up. Probably couldn't do like do a bit. <laughs> Make me distracting. Yeah. Six second bit. I, I don't know. We used to make vines. We used to script out vines and make a whole series of them before. I'm sure you could come up with something clever for it. You could probably do a bit. They were kind of I a think. pain in the dick hole to make, like having to shoot in order. Yeah, that's before you... <laughs> Vine had like editing tools on it whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we did all those when Vine was not easy to use. And then yeah. as soon as we stopped, it got super simple to do that kind of thing. Yeah, now yeah, it's like really a... difficult to use again. Yeah, they made it much harder. Yeah, <laughs> man, I remember. I remember when I, I went to a uh, an arts high school in San Antonio uh, for for film, and uh, remember editing on two VCRs. Like that's where I started mm. my my video editing uh, career. I guess you could say uh, is yeah, just having a jog shuttle and two VCRs and doing like the play play pause play pause record. Uh, <laughs> And then we finally, then we finally got like nonlinear, nonlinear editors. And I remember it was just like such a boneheaded waste of money because we bought these dedicated, like, by the way, editing computers existed. Like you could get Premiere, <laughs> but we bought these dedicated, they were called Avios, these like Sony Avio dedicated, like nonlinear editing machines that cost like five grand a piece. And they only edited <sighs> When you could get like a computer for half that that had Premiere on it, I don't. Yeah. It, Why? I do not know because because uh, <laughs> uh, school districts love wasting money and not spending mm. it on the right things. <laughs> just like no, no, just get us a couple of computers. Yeah, that was. Yeah. Um, I remember in I did I took like some media course at school, and uh, for some of our coursework we had to like make a a film at the end. <laughs> And the only and like we had like computers all around the room. There was probably like twenty computers in the room, but not, they're all computers without any editing software. The only editing computer was uh, it was like I don't know if it was an iMac. It was whatever Mac it was, where it was like a like a dome and then a monitor like stuck out of it. Do you remember one that what that was? No, yeah, was that was an iMac. It was it was one of the, I was like it was one of yeah. the iMacs. And it had Final Cut on it, and no one in the entire school knew how to use it, and it sat there my entire school career and i didn't ever see anyone touch it because none of the teachers had any access to like teaching materials on that stuff maybe so... uh one of the school janitors used it late at <laughs> night <laughs> got his degree through that yeah just another, <laughs> another like colossal school waste of money because that probably yeah. wasn't cheap at the time it's, it's 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 funny andrew you talk about editing on on two vcrs when i was in high school i would do the same thing like I, I hated doing school projects so i would always ask like instead of asking writing a paper something like can i turn in a video on that because i had a, a vhs camcorder and i could do editing with that and my vcr so i would film stuff with my friends all the time and then use like the camcorder and the vcr plugged in together to just like edit together really stupid things it would take like an hour or two instead of having to write a paper <laughs> but because no because this was like in 95 and 90 94 through 96 most is when i did it like but since nobody knew how to do that back then, everyone thought it took way more time and was really difficult. Like, no, I'm just gonna bang this out in an hour until we'll be done. <laughs> oh no, yeah, you were you were a magician. Like you were a magician. Yeah. You you were you were like a scientist in like medieval times. Like all you did was like mix two chemicals together and it like like created a puff of smoke and everyone was like, oh 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 my gosh, <laughs> we, geez Louise. We, we had a special effect once where we had we had something disappear in the shot. It was just my friend was holding it. Then I paused the recording. He didn't move. Another friend came and took it out of his hands. Then I kept recording. So like it just Don't looked like it, it looked like it disappeared out of his hands. And afterwards, everyone, including the teacher, was like, "How did you do that? That was amazing." <laughs> yeah. me, and my, me and my older brother used to do that 
all the time with our home camcorder. We used to take it and film home videos all the time. And we'd be like, okay, I got the shot set up. All right, stop recording. All right, now move out of frame. Now start recording again. And every single video without fail would be me behind the camera going, whoa, Steven, where did you go? I thought that was amazing. <laughs> Gus, do you remember that so... time that you showed that video of a train headed right toward the class and then everyone <laughs> ran out of the classroom because they were really scared? <laughs> That's what it feels like, man. That's what it feels like. It was actually really difficult to edit that way. Like I had a little, um, I had like a high 8 video camera with the VCR, but then in between I had this like, Thing. It was like you would sit in front of your TV and edit it and it had sliders and you could plug music into it and and me and my friends would shoot some stuff and we'd be like 40 minutes into our tape like we've got 40 minutes of content which probably took us several hours to do and then I would have him like try and cue up the music as I press play on the on the camcorder as we put it onto tape but he would like play the wrong track and I'd be like no no no, uh, no, no other track and, and he would try and skip backwards but it would just restart the wrong track and then it'd be like double tap and then uh, because we'd be so far into the tape and we didn't want to rewind and like overwrite the previous part of the tape. We would just leave it. So there'd be like all these like <laughs> permanent editing errors throughout our videos. I think oh. I still got those somewhere. I got to whip those out at some point. Yeah, I Shit. wish I could find my old high school videos, like the one I'm talking about. I know they've got to exist somewhere. I just I have no idea where. I need to go back home and go through all the my old shit and find it. Yeah, I used to make so many videos with my friends, like from the like early two thousands kind of era where we just make these really dumb videos i i would pay good money to be able to find it and watch that stuff do you, because do you not have them anymore i haven't been able to find them every time i go home i try to look for it and i it's just like it's disappeared from the light of day i have no idea where it could have gone but they were filmed on like those little mini cassette tapes mm, the mini, mini tv yeah yeah Oh, I have a, I have like a garbage bag full, not a garbage bag, but uh, yeah, yeah, volume, <laughs> a huge, huge bag of mini DV tapes. Cause yeah, same thing. Like uh, in high school at that, like arts high school, me and my friend Matt made tons of little videos and we made like three, four, no, four feature length movies in high school. Um, one of which was like three hours long. We were so dumb. We didn't know what the <laughs> hell we were just making like the, and like, those were like our, like, you know, bigger forays, but then we'd have like, uh, you know, smaller, just really, really silly, uh, like shorter, like I, sketches, I guess you could call them, but they, yeah. man, the lore, my God, the lore, just like, and they <laughs> were just for friend. us. Like there was nowhere to put them or show them or do oh, them yeah. just right. for us. <laughs> They never were going to go anywhere. Me and my friend no. Brittany used to make uh, videos all the time. You guys might remember Brittany. Uh, yeah. She was Blonder on the website when I was Blondie because she created her account after me. And we essentially wanted to do videos and call it Blonde Productions. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> but we had the genius idea to do a series of videos called Jill Ass instead of Jagass because we wanted uh. to do like the female Jackass. <laughs> And it was just Chill us ass. being like such idiots around our city, like doing stupid things and wearing stupid costumes. And it's just like, who the fuck would ever want to see this? Or why do we think this is a good idea? Well, I want to see it now. I do. Now, I see yes, it. for me. Right you now. were making it for us. You just didn't know us yet. Yeah, I guess. Well, now I'm glad I don't know where they are. <laughs> this episode of the Receipt Podcast is brought to you by Me Undies. We saw one leaf fall on the ground yesterday, so that can mean only one thing. Fall is finally coming. It's time to get your booties ready for the spookiest time of the year with the softest undies to grace your bottom. I'm sorry about the pun. Uh, me undies knows exactly how to celebrate the season with the coolest prints and colors and the softest undies known to man. They want you to be comfortable and express yourself every day in every way. Uh, I only wear me undies. I talk about them all the time. They're the best. With MeUndies membership, they show up to your door every month. That means you don't have to go anywhere to get new pairs. They've got great seasonal prints. I have seasonal underwear for different times of year. Uh, so I get to bring out my Halloween one soon. Uh, MeUndies uh, undies also grow on trees. No, seriously, they're made from irresistibly soft, natural fibers sourced from beechwood trees. And you know what natural fibers mean? It, that their micromodal is not only super soft, but breathable, light, and impossibly cozy. That's some serious comfort. Everything MeUndies does is to help you feel truly comfortable from head to toe, from outside to in. So to get your 15% off your first order, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash roosterteeth. That's MeUndies.com slash roosterteeth for 15% off your first order, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. 
<laughs> yeah, recently I, I went through and digitized all of my Hi8 tapes, like my 8 mil tapes. Is that the same format? I don't know. But I still got a ton of mini DV, but I don't have the camera that I shot it all on. And it's like surprisingly difficult just to get like a mini DV player. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I'm not sure how to go about playing those back and capturing them. Can you well, bu like buy one off of eBay? I mean, I was looking at some like professional and, and... decks, but they're like <laughs> four grand and stuff still for some reason. Not worth well, it. I was going to Gavin, I still have in my closet, I have a Canon XL1 that plays mini DV tapes. If you want to borrow it to digitize some of your old mini DVs, Dude, let me what's, know. What's your rental fee on that? <laughs> oh, gratis. It's, uh, you, you just oh, take it. Very kind. Digi yeah, digitize I would, I would love that. I would love that. <laughs> uh, yeah. I I Got to get the, the firewire cable uh, and then a converter because like. Firewire like cable. <laughs> Well, it goes from like <laughs> it goes like from mini firewire to like an eight like an eight pin, and so you've got to get a converter for an eight pin to go to like I don't know what like a USB C now. I don't even know how you would like go yeah. about. There was a lot of firewire four hundred back then on those cameras. <laughs> yeah, baby, man. I, I found uh, advanced so much. That, I found that Avio system that Andrew was talking about. It looks like a piece of junk, dude. <laughs> it was a piece of junk. Can you show a picture? Uh, I put it in the Discord chat. Oh, it looks oh, like okay. It looks oh. like it has. <laughs> there it is. Oh, so it's, it's like, like a composite yeah. video and this video. There's the firewire port on it. There, it's like mini firewire, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They were they were definitely like they could do analog and digital, and you had to like real time digitize everything. So it was still yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the the Casablanca. God damn, that wow. takes that takes me way back. How big is that thing? Like, oh, it's huge. Oh, it's like, <laughs> it's like two extra large pizza boxes like stacked on top, like three extra large pizza boxes stacked on top of each other. It's huge. It costs like five grand, and like a a user <clears throat> interface that was maddening. Like you almost like longed for two VCRs after using it because it was like, <laughs> oh, they crashed all the time. <laughs> My God. Dude, stuff was a pain in the ass. Like I always think of uh, James Cameron when he was trying to cut down aliens to make it shorter. He didn't really want to cut any scenes after he'd already made like his final selection. So apparently he just went through each, each cut, like, each shot and like just trimmed like two or three frames off. But to have to do that like man manually on film, I'd have blown my freaking head off if I, I was his editor. That sounds awful. That probably would have no, taken like longer than filming the actual film. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you know, you're paying a guy to do it. Yeah. No, but, that's absolute torture. It just, ugh. It's crazy. Do you think, it, it's no coincidence, right, that all four of us used to, like, we all make content for a living, and we all used to do it as, as kids, basically. I think that's just how that's just the natural flow of it isn't it i just like find it funny creators. that i actually applied to a film program going into college and i got denied entry <laughs> me um, too and now i'm working in film <laughs> kind of yeah, hey no. Andrew, high five. <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i wanted to go to uh, uh be an rtf major at ut but i didn't didn't get in so i uh got an english degree instead yeah i got a marketing degree instead it was at a, a the university I went to, it specializes in business and in film, but the film program, they only accept like 60 students a semester or something crazy like that. And uh, part of the application process was that you had to make a, like a short film or something to submit to show mm -hmm. your skill or your creativity. Um, I didn't have any friends that wanted to participate in anything. I didn't have anybody. So I just filmed people around my high school unbeknownst to them. And like edited it together to some Sia music and then <laughs> submitted it. Cause I was like, uh, this is artsy. <laughs> uh, cinema verite. Yeah. Uh, God. Cause I'm, I wasn't gonna submit Jill ass. <laughs> Jill ass. Now you would have been a shoe in. <laughs> you had something, you, God, that fucking Master Pancake tweet about uh, any film being uh, a Wes Anderson film if you add Paul Simon to it. I mean that whole yeah. bit was fucking. That whole bit was fucking amazing, dude. Yeah. I, I, I don't think I've talked to you about that since I saw that. God damn, from the, that from, was from the, so from the Goonies. Funny. Yeah, yeah. That opening scene of the Goonies when they're breaking too, out of jail. It's too good. It's it's absolutely a Wes Anderson film. Just putting Paul Simon in it. It's but it's crazy. 
uh, I was just thinking about flashing back to that that uh, that Casablanca Avio and that like if those still exist anywhere right now, if they're still sitting, can you imagine how yellow that gray plastic is right now? I, oh, I it's awesome. <laughs> I found I found this image on eBay. I can buy you one if you want. I can buy you that one on eBay right now. <laughs> how much? It won't power on. It's for parts only. <laughs> it's for parts. Do you want to actually be a, a super interesting? hard mode or something or like some like core show if you just have to make a video but using tech from at least 30 years ago that's that's a really 20. good idea yeah uh, like i have to edit non-linearly and all that stuff or it's linearly 255 dollars too that's much not too that's bad that's, it's not that's, like that's, four grand a depreciation it's a bitch that's a depreciation that's a steep fall off let me see if i can it is interesting see. looking at devices from a, a few decades ago and watching like which parts of them always fail like like you were saying the plastic if it's been like out in light it's gonna be all gammy and yellow <laughs> like pretty much any any machine that has like a rubber belt inside it that that probably is dissolved and like <laughs> just disintegrated at this point mm -hmm. you always have to like replace the belts on old stuff even in like new old stock it's all very very unlikely to turn on i think i found you yeah. a working one function. andrew I found you a working one for five hundred dollars. Uh huh. Why don't we all? Know... Why don't we all chip in and we could all take turns using it? <laughs> yeah. The person selling five hundred dollars knows that like other technology exists. Right? <laughs> like in my mind, it's like take this out of my closet, take this out of my guest room. I want to put a treadmill in there, which I will also be giving away two years from now when I don't use that anymore. <laughs> Those just become clothes hanging devices at some point, yeah, right? All exactly. those cardio machines. Exactly. I, I remember always being so amazed, like when when you make the leap from digitizing stuff and just editing with files. I remember being so blown away at the time that you could capture your footage like faster than real time. Oh yeah. And you didn't have to just like press play on it and record it somewhere. You could just like drag and drop. It's like, wow, that was like a few seconds to copy a few minutes. Like that was the biggest step up in my brain of like how easy things have got. Yeah. These, these kids I, it, nowadays, they don't appreciate it. They don't appreciate <laughs> the like, actually like going over to a friend's house and in real time, just like logging footage, just like playing back, like playing Mario Kart while footage dumped into a computer in real time. Cause that's yeah. how you had to do it. Just like, oh no, the camera on the battery is going to die. God damn Like, why don't we plug it in? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Good. Good times. And then, but it was a miracle. That was the thing. It's like it, it, you you always have that like that window of like a new like new technology. It's like we started on two VCRs, and that was like you know a pain in the ass, but we didn't know any better. And then you get like nonlinear editing, and it was a miracle, but it was also a different kind of pain in the ass. And then you there's always that like advent of new technology where it's like. This is a revolution, but also introduces its own other host of like picadillos and problems and shit. And then you eventually find like a couple years after that, like the technology technology kind of finds its groove. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh yeah, like nonlinear digital computer editing. Like that makes a lot more sense. And like, you know, is how we still do things. So it's I still remember when Gus had to teach us how to use a pager for that connected doc we did a couple of years ago. <laughs> where uh, Blaine and I lost all technology for a week and had to go back to like 1980s technology. And that, uh, both me and Blaine were like, what do you do with this? Like, how do I communicate with this thing? And yeah. Gus had to I, teach I'll be us honest, how to use I never, it. I never once interacted with a pager or anyone who had one. Um, they, I, did, listen, I don't know whether they were less, you're, less, like... You're on a podcast with a former pager repairman. So if, uh, <laughs> if you ever do get a Andrew, pager and you need me. to fix it... This is the guy for you right here. <laughs> so were they just were they just a phone without the phone parts? Essentially, like was it just it had like a phone number that could receive a message, but then that was it. Right. It was just like yeah, you it was can't whole, it was, send, right? Right. I mean, the beeper you couldn't. It was just like basically a cell phone, but without the speaker or the what do you call it? Where, where you or the mic, and uh, that was it. <laughs> it had, the one, the place where you talk. And, and it had what a little. It had a little weight, like a little haptic thing that spun that made it buzz. Buzz, yeah. It it, it is a uh, it's the same revolutionary technology that's available at your local Chili's when your table's ready. Yep. It was the exact same. Uh, it would exact vibrate same technology. and turn red. Yeah. I go. <laughs> voot, voot, voot. Um, my dad definitely had my dad definitely had pagers. 
uh, back at like how much? I'm, how much cocaine did he deal? Uh, you know, uh, um, mountains. But then, you know, I mean, when uh, a bunch of guys with uh, machine guns infiltrated that uh, tacky, <laughs> gaudy mansion in Miami, it all came. Or maybe that was a movie. I might be confused. Um, I just glanced at the chat. Uh, Scoopy Five says we still use pages at my job. I would love to wow. know what job that is and whether it's just like a, a hipster thing or whether you actually need like a hipster pager. thing. <laughs> Huh. Or is it like it's like dangerous so, to use a phone or something because of explosions? Maybe someone else said that they're still common at hospitals. Who is this? Matt Mopar four forty says they're still common at hospitals. Uh, okay, huh. I would have thought they would have been like an internal system at this point and not like a cellular pager. But, yeah. Hmm. Shrug, shruggage. <laughs> so who's this? Eat crab. It's a great name, by the way. Eat crab says it's Twitter without reply. <laughs> I don't know what you mean by that. <laughs> I don't know either. So you it's just a weird message. step. It's like they already had mobile telephone technology and then just made half a phone. Like, why not just make the whole phone? Was it, it was, a bandwidth it, issue? It, it was cheaper and the service plan for the pager was also... Because back then, service plans for cell phones were super expensive. So it's like the pager was a stopgap. Like, it was a cheaper way to stay in contact. All right. Fair hmm. play. Yeah. It was a small market. Well... At a very, uh, a, like a small window in time where it was viable. Because then, you know, cell phones became much cheaper. They're still not cheap, but it's much cheaper than they used to be. They used to be, you have to pay by the minute. I think the first cell phone my family had, it was it was a weird deal where it's like, it was like the first four minutes of a call were free. But then after that, every minute was five dollars a minute or it's like, like ninety dollars yeah yeah so it's like if i ever wanted to use the the like the family cell phone which was bolted into the car by the way it's yeah like you, had to, you had to my be dad done. had a car phone too yeah you had to be done in the first four minutes otherwise he would start charging you yeah what there was like a saying? literal stopwatch just like yeah. <laughs> oh, okay okay four yeah, minutes i remember up, using the right internet I, um, my dial-up was paid by the minute or whatever so weird so i would try and talk to all my friends on msn and then get off as quickly as possible <laughs> is long distance still like a big thing with phone calls because i feel like that's not i i never hear plans talk about like long distance calling and the cost of that and adding it onto a plan i feel like that's not even no, a big they're not thing going anymore. through a switchboard that has to be like manually patched to a different system yeah and now it's the same like, system now isn't it FaceTime yeah. and whatnot, you could go through Wi-Fi and all that stuff. I don't know. I feel like it's just yeah. not an aspect of calling anymore. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, do you... I don't ever call internationally, but do you have to pay for... I, I assume you still have to pay extra for international calls, right? Yeah, it's still a shitload. If you don't have an international plan, it's still a ball ache. To, yeah, like, a lot of the time, I'll have to dial into a, an English co conference call. And it's so freaking expensive. I can't believe it, actually. Why, why do they really? do that? Why, I mean, we have, like... All this other like IP based technology now, just meet on Google Meet or Discord or Wizzle yeah. Wazzle or whatever the fucking. That's new how app I is. talk to my family. <laughs> we just Wizzle use uh, either Zoom or FaceTime at this point to talk to each yeah. other. Like I, I don't think I call my parents on the phone ever. Yeah, I talk. I talk to family on the internet, Wi-Fi yeah. and such. This episode of the Receipt Podcast is brought to you by G Fuel. Let us tell you a little bit about our awesome partners over at G Fuel, the official energy drink of esports and the official energy drink providers of this Rooster Teeth presentation. You see, G Fuel is our go to source for all things energy related. It's sugar free, packed with vitamins and antioxidants, available in over 40 unique mouth watering flavors. And you may have noticed that one flavor in particular has tickled our team's fancy grape, of course. Why? Well, because people like grapes. We like grapes. We're people. Uh, Rooster Teeth people, to be precise there. Uh, accordingly, we'll be taking G Fuel's classic grape flavor and giving it a limited edition Rooster Teeth reskin this October. And guess what? If you'd like to get notified the very second this ultra limited edition People Love Grapes G Fuel and Rooster Teeth collaboration flavor drops in October, simply head to gfuel.com slash grapes. Grapes, you know, like the thing that you like, that we all like. Uh, and if you're trying to ride the G Fuel wave before our flavor drops, be sure to use promo code Rooster Teeth at checkout for a spicy 30% off discount all week long. Cheers. People like discounts. It's a uh, oh. it's much cheaper and much better being able to meet people virtually, just like RTX at home. 
<gasps> what? Woo, what a segue. What a Good fuck, thing what this a podcast fucking... is brought to us by Kill, Gus. <laughs> mm, killer segue. Uh, here, you want to see some raccoons? Oops, not, not that one. Here you go. Raccoons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're going to be at RTX. They're going to be watching RTX from, the ba- from my backyard. Are you going to be there? <laughs> We're going to have raccoon RTX shirts. And they'll be wearing them that say raccoons like grapes. <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. I have videos of uh, there was a raccoon in my old backyard that I used to feed grapes. Anyway, keep going. Uh, raccoons RTX, like grapes. <laughs> RTX is kicking off this week. Well, what are we, officially uh, Wednesday, but we have first night coming up. Is that tomorrow? Yeah, there it is. Tomorrow night, night at five tomorrow, o'clock. Tomorrow night at five. Five o'clock uh, Central Time in Texas. Uh, Which you should, uh, also hang out with us. Uh, you know, little known fact, which surprised me that more people don't know about this. First Night is not first exclusive. It's available to everyone to watch. Some things at RTX are first exclusive, and it says so on the on the uh, schedule that the <laughs> RTX event uh, Twitter handle but tweeted out and on the site. First in the title isn't. Right. So First Night <laughs> is not first only. It's available publicly, so everyone could watch it uh, here on RTTV at 5 o'clock central. Just wanted to clear that up. <laughs> and five o'clock central, it's the same time that the podcast normally starts. Uh, just if you're in a different time zone, so. yeah. but on a different so, day. Tomorrow. We'll page you when it starts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, it's uh, there'll be a lot of announcements at first night. It's kind of like the whole kickoff. It's like a, a keynote for the whole event. So if you want to see all of the different announcements and stuff that's coming up, uh, first night's the place to go, and that's tomorrow, less than twenty four hours now. Just under 24 hours from this very moment, you can uh, you can be taking part in first night. Yeah, boy. There's also a you know for those of you watching who don't know too much about RTX, there's all the information is on RTXEvent.com. But we're also doing like virtual meet and greets and happy hours <laughs> and signings and stuff like that. So you could get individual people's meet and greets and all that stuff on the RTX event site. But I've done a bunch of those for conventions in the past, and they're really really fun. Um, I would, if you are doing them, like come with like a question or two if you want, or if you just want to like come and hang out and chat with us, that's totally fine too. But they're super chill, super fun. Don't be stressed about doing them. Uh, mm-hmm. I think you guys will have a great time. And it's it's really a nice way for us to actually get to interact with you guys and meet you guys since we can't do that in person this year, unfortunately. Yeah. In chat, Bane09 says, guys, I just realized this will be the first RTX that my cats can attend. Bring your cats. <laughs> Bring your all dogs. Cats, well, all cats show, welcome. Show us your pets. No raccoons. I will not talk done, to you if you're holding a raccoon. We should have done meetups where we would just put our own pets on camera and other people could put their pets on camera and they just like <gasps> cycle them through. Yes. That'd be that'd be even better. That's better than yeah. talking to one of us. I'll I'll bring Benjamin. If you come to one of my meet and greets, I'll have Benjamin there. <laughs> He'll be here with me. <laughs> that's a that's a hard sell right there. Yeah. I mean a easy sell. Not hard so, sell. Uh, Completely yeah. opposite. Cut- Come check it out. It's, uh, what do we say, September 15th to 25th. So we've got 10 days. Uh, we're going to have panels for just about everything. We have a uh, Black Box Down panel. We're going to be doing a live episode of Black Box Down. And we're going to be taking, we're already, we're currently taking questions for the Black Box Down panel so that we can play them or we can answer them during the panel. So submit them. And I'm sure other panels are doing very similar things. Again, go to rtxevent.com. You get all the information about it. I personally am very excited for the Good Morning from Hell panel. I yeah. won't say much more, but Andrew, yeah. I know you're also excited about it. Me too. Also excited for it. Yeah. For a reason, but also for reason. nervous for it because it's it might be a cluster of what we're yeah. trying to do. There. Those are the best ones. So come watch it live. Um, Eric points out that we're going to have a live Rooster Teeth podcast at this time next week, but it's the RTX version. Hey. So just tune in for the podcast again next week. We also, um, so there's one more point that I want to mention. This is important. Uh, last minute coupon for people who want to sign up for first for an extended time to watch all of RTX. Uh, there's a special coupon code, which is RTX trial, all one word, all capital. Um, yeah, you could use that to sign up for first, I guess, for a limited time just to experience RTX. So if you're not already a first member, that's a great way to sign up and get to experience all the panels and all the events um, happening during the week. RTX trial. Yeah. Do it. I bet you won't. I dare you. I dare you to do it. <laughs> Coward. <laughs> <laughs> right, we'll, that's how, we'll that's how we uh, 
we like we like uh, coercion when we get people to uh, to do things. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'm starting to feel slightly overwhelmed by all of the tech. I feel like there's a ton of new cool PC stuff happening, and there's all the consoles, and I feel like it's never been there's never been a, a clash this big between consoles and PC gaming. I feel like oh, almost so to the point where it's like, where's it gonna? Well, I just feel like it, there's so there's so many good options on both sides. There's now mm. like a huge draw to go to PC gaming with the new the new video cards, which seemed obscene compared to the last generation. Yeah, of course, of and... course. They, I just got a fucking 2080 like last month. Of course, <laughs> the fucking 3080s are out now. <laughs> you have no idea how fucking pissed I was when they announced the 3080. I was like, God damn it! I waited five years for my new computer. I finally got it, and instantly, within a fucking month, it's out of uh, it's 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 old now. <laughs> Are you gonna are you gonna replace it with a thirty ninety or something? Fuck 30, no, 80? God, what is that? Like fifteen hundred bucks for the thirty ninety? <sighs> well, how much was the twenty eighty Ti? It was part of the whole computer. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's like over a grand, wasn't it? Yeah, that's even worse. I just, I just spent a <laughs> bunch of money. <laughs> you could just sell it now. I'm I'm sure you could get a good price. I'll sell it on eBay. I can just get sit it without a video price. card. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll sell it. I'll make you a deal. I'll, I'll throw it in Avio system. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I was waiting for that callback. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm also slightly confused by the, the new Xbox lineup, the uh, Series X and S, because I read today in an IGN tweet that the Xbox Series S, the white one, can't play enhanced games that were on the Xbox One X. Correct. I think it, it doesn't do the 4K. It can only do... HD, but only the, the 1080. So it's it's a console that's less powerful than the current gen. The the Xbox One X. But I think the the it's less powerful than the One X, but it's more powerful than the One. I guess I don't know why you would get that over a One X then. Like uh, say Series X comes out. There might and be like new series games for it that aren't playable on the old Xbox. But it seems to me like that right now, it just seems like they're just trying to make games accessible everywhere, no matter what you have. Yeah, I just feel like if you're if you're on a budget and you want 4K gaming, I assume it'll be cheaper to get a 1X than a Series S. Um, I don't know that for sure, but I, that's what I would do. But, but the, I guess I just... The Series S is two hundred bucks, right? And the One X is four. Oh, okay. So it's actually yeah, it is. Cheap. I guess it is much, if, it is if, much the, cheaper. if the if the One X doesn't drop that much in price, yeah, it just yeah. seems like a strangely the... overlapping lineup at the moment. I guess hmm. this is the RTX thing, right? This is like no, we're we're talking about the Xbox right now. <laughs> oh, okay, but the before you're talking about the RTX the thirty eighty yes. was it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, T totally the, uh, not a confusing name at all. It was ours first, by the <laughs> I way. I know. I was like, just get the RTX 2020. It's only five bucks for everything. <laughs> uh, I just sent. A, I just dropped a video. A and, Andrew. And, yeah. I can't believe what I'm seeing. This video. What are you doing, you lunatic? Let, let's uh, let, let's let's show the people here what Andrew does on his weekends. <gasps> oh my god, dude! <laughs> oh my god. He what you weren't lying. <laughs> <laughs> it was sideways. It was flipped sideways. But yeah, that was from like six years ago. It was like from 2015 or yeah, that no, was 2015, five years ago. Uh, yeah, in my old place, I had a uh, had a, a very bold raccoon that uh, slowly but surely got comfortable enough to come up and take grapes uh, from my hand. But uh, which apparently don't recommend doing because uh, raccoon. I mean, it was very sweet and very nice, but apparently uh, raccoons uh, transmit are the number one transmitter of rabies to human beings in in the United States. So be careful. They are cute, and it was very sweet. Just taking it very very gingerly from my hand. Thank you. And Remember would... how last year at RTX there was a story of people who were here for RTX finding a bat in the street oh, and touching yeah. the bat. <laughs> And potentially how they could have gotten rabies and Don't we're like oh man bat. i really hope this wasn't someone who was attending rtx <laughs> it, it, luckily you know what you don't have to worry about from rtx at home a bat you have, unless you have bats in your home your home is bat free 
<laughs> there will be no bats in your house. That's a Gus prom. That's a Gus Co promise. <laughs> okay, the the chat is letting me know that Series S has ray tracing, and the Xbox One X is discontinued. Yes. Oh. And uh, I guess the price is like that's an excellent price for a new console. Yeah, it's just that... weird that if it's if it's better in some ways, it's worse in other ways. I'm curious to see uh, Sony's having their press conference. I said on Wednesday, so like two days from today. I think that hopefully they'll finally announce a release date and pricing and what they're doing for the PS5. Uh, so I mean, we'll we'll see. I'm 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 so far. I'm really interested in everything that I've seen with the Xbox. And I think Microsoft has a lot going on with making gaming accessible. Uh, so I'm curious to see how Sony, uh, how Sony answers. But Sony just has killer first party titles, you know? Accessible in what way? Like mainly affordability? Affordability. I mean, I think having Project X Cloud work, which X Cloud uh, debuts tomorrow, by the way, on Android devices. I think X Cloud is really interesting. I think some of the pricing structures that Microsoft has for the uh, Series X and for the way that that works is really interesting, where you can pay on monthly installments and get, you know, Game Pass, a console, and Xbox Live all bundled in like one monthly payment. Yeah, that's badass. Yeah, I think just, you know, for people maybe who is, you know, buying a gaming PC is very expensive. Buying a console is not as expensive, but it's still a lot of money. You know, if you can try to reduce that barrier to entry, you just end up with a lot more people uh, playing games. You probably could have bought two Xbox Series Xs for the price of your obsolete graphics. Why game. are you rubbing salt in my wound, Gabby? <laughs> <laughs> Gus, the, the 2080 Ti is still a, a very good graphics card. But it's yeah. excellent. I bought it to play Cyberpunk 2077, and now when I'm playing Cyberpunk, I'm gonna know it could look better. You know, you know what a 3090 would really help you out with? with Flight Simulator. Flight Simulator. That's the other thing I was gonna say. Oh, I didn't even <laughs> think about could, that one. I could maybe finally put like all the ultra max settings on a Flight Simulator. I, I'm I'm excited to see a ton of videos of people getting a 3090 and having to like cut holes in their case like people who refuse to get a new case just want to shove it in there i want to see more of that because that thing is a, a <laughs> it's brick a, it's huge they have a sizing guide i was looking at the nvidia website the other day and they said like they have system requirements and the system requirements includes physical specifications for how big of a space you need in your computer and your case in order Jesus. to fit it crazy it's, madness yeah, it's big <laughs> how many gigabytes is uh that flight simulator game how much how much you have to download 100 so. I, it's 120 gigs oh. holy shit yeah jesus oh my God. that's like yeah. the entire disk space of my computer <laughs> it's it's a fucking it's fucking massive and it's it yeah. it's also constantly streaming data from the internet as well so um yeah you need a lot of space for it you almost needed like its own machine for it like it's that's what i got PC. right here <laughs> got a whole separate PC to do flight I, I just simulator. happen to be I just happen to be podcasting on it right now. <laughs> oh wait, weren't weren't you gonna play something with Chris or someone who had to have that game installed and like they were gonna install it right before the recording and then realized it was 120 something gigs? Yeah, we were supposed to film something with Chris and uh, he 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 showed up to the recording with I think the trial version or the demo version installed. Oh. Like Chris, you need the game. <laughs> he's like, no, no, I can still play it. Then he tried to launch it and he's like, oh no, wait, I can't. Yeah. We ended up, we ended oh. up filming something else. Um, I don't know what the status of that video is. Uh, I'll talk about it anyway. So since Chris didn't have the game, we, we like, we're like, well, let's film something in Flight Simulator anyway. So then everyone else involved, we just had everyone suggest places that they wanted to visit since we're all stuck at home and you know no one's able to travel so we just went and did like sightseeing around the world like places that we like Aww, and I trying like to that. find uh spots since it has like all the the bing map data and uh it, I, I think it ended up pretty good i don't know i haven't seen an edit i haven't seen a cut of it i don't know what how i don't know what the end product looked like but it was, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was it was fun to fly around and and look at things that we can't see yeah i miss that i miss those days this episode of the Receipt Podcast is brought to you by HelloFresh. Get fresh, pre-measured ingredients and mouth-watering seasonal recipes delivered right to your door with HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh lets you skip those trips to the grocery store and makes home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. Uh, I like HelloFresh because it cuts out stressful meal planning, grocery store trips, so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in about 30 minutes or less. 
You can save 40% by using HelloFresh versus shopping at your local grocery store, and it's more convenient too. Uh, HelloFresh also makes sure that over 90% of the ingredients are sourced directly from growers to ensure the freshest recipes are delivered to your door. And since they offset their operations, travel, and shipping emissions, HelloFresh's carbon footprint is about 25% lower than store-bought grocery-made meals. Uh, you know, I eat a plant-based diet, and I can make the recipes work for me. Uh, they got great stuff like mushroom and zucchini tempura bowls with sesame scallion rice and quick pickled cucumbers. You know, I like pickling things. Kind of checks all my boxes, right? Uh, go to HelloFresh.com slash 80RTP and use code 80RTP for, to get a total of $80 off your first month, including free shipping on your first box. Additional restrictions do apply. Please visit HelloFresh.com for more details. That's HelloFresh.com slash 80RTP and use code 80RTP to get a total of $80 off your first month, including free shipping on your first box. Yeah, I've been watching. So my my YouTube recommendations are so funny nowadays. I'm getting a lot of um, videos of people experiencing like the best first class there are mm. um, like these like crazy first class suites that people could take on these like really long flights. And it's just like, I'm addicted to these now. Did, did you see the, I, the, the I'll Emirates? Never experience it. Did you see yes. the Emirates A380 apartment? Yep. Yep. That was one of them. Um, I, I love that YouTube exists for stuff like that because I assume back in the day, it would have been a lot of effort to get like a TV series commissioned. But now you could just live vicariously through other people who have yeah. a sh like a shit, like blowing a salary on a flight to the point where it's like, now I feel like I don't have to do that. I mean, as nice as it would be to fly in a small apartment, it's not, it's not, you don't need to do that. But to see what it's like, I feel like that's the interesting part. Yeah, that Emirates yeah. one that uh, I was talking about with Barbara, like there's a living room. A bathroom with its own shower and a separate bedroom. I'm not sure which like... video. I'm not sure which video specifically you watched, uh, Barbara, but I've seen a couple of them like that, and it's like it's absolutely ridiculous. Where the the person in the video I've seen will be asleep in the bed, and then like the flight attendant will come in and offer them food, you know, while they're in yeah. a fucking bed laying down. I feel like it's you like, wouldn't want the flight that's... to end. I know it's probably better than some people's living spaces. I mean, yeah. probably much better than a lot of people's living spaces. I think of those like closet apartments people have in I New would York just feel or like wherever. I was wasting it if I was asleep, and because I I did Same. that once. Like I, I've never I've never bought first class. I've just I've, I sometimes get the upgrade if I've you know flown enough miles. That's the only time I've done it. Or sometimes if a company uh, like offers it to you if to like fly and do a job, like they did. Well, that now that's for, being used uh, as bailout money. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, I once I once got put in um, business class to Austria, and Jeez. I was so tired on the way back <laughs> that I fell asleep. Like and they're the seats that like fully recline into like a bed shape. Yeah, and I just I fell asleep before the plane took off, <laughs> just bolt upright, and I woke up with like an hour left on the flight, and I'd like wasted all of the comfort <laughs> of business yeah. class because <laughs> I was just slumped over upright. Like... Oh. That is easily the. <laughs> biggest first world problem and i've like i've been lucky enough to have been upgraded before because we do fly a lot and you do get upgrades through frequent flyer programs and whatnot um i've flown business class once on an international flight and i was like i i can't sleep on this because i'm going to waste every i don't yeah. want to waste a second of this because it's an experience it, it, that i'll never get again probably it, it makes it better and more exciting though like when you don't grow up with that stuff and then you get to like have a little taste of it through like oh, work or whatever so you're just like and I woke up with like an hour left on the flight. I was like, oh no, oh, no! no! I, I was like immediately reclined. I was like, and it's like, we will be landing in 45 minutes. I was like, no, no. Quick, The enjoy, best part enjoy, of those enjoy, things though, enjoy. you know you're in luxury when they bring you um, an actual like plate and real like metal silverware to eat where you're just like, oh, oh my God, what, what is this? <laughs> oh, hot towel. Plane? Yeah. Ooh, yeah, I always how? thought they give you plastic silverware because they don't want you stabbing people. But I guess it's just a, like a weight thing because they yeah. give it to business class proper like stabbies. But yeah. it's not like they have a sharp tip or those knives are sharp at all. <laughs> nah, but you know, you could, if you shove it hard enough, it'll go in. They can the barely fork, cut this filet mignon. <laughs> <laughs> I say. Oh my God. I do so. <laughs> yeah, I'll do I, a uh, wine I tasting, think please. The I've flown upgraded class. Um, it was like I think business. I can't. It, it's it's definitely it definitely wasn't. 
I can't remember like it uh, it was not economy plus but it was like somewhat nicer and flew like flew to probably yeah. yeah it was probably business but I flew to flew to London uh for RTX London oh, a couple of, for a couple nice. of years ago and it was one of those things where it was like I mean it was ba- essentially like double the ticket price but I was like you know what I'm doing this for me this is like the trip I've never yeah. been overseas never been overseas I'm like th- I'm 33 I've never been overseas I'm spending let me spend the money and just like do it do it right and uh Man, it it is it's going to be so hard to go back to uh, That's the problem, whenever yeah. Whenever we can fly again uh safely. It's going to be Once so hard because that. That's actually it, not a bad price if it was only double like I sometimes business class is like 6 to 10 times more expensive yeah. than premium economy. The the thing um, you want to do, the the little trick you could do, depending on like I don't know if it has anything to do with status or whatnot, but when you're actually checking in the day of your flight and you ask if they have upgrades to business or whatever, sometimes it'll be a lot cheaper just to do it that way. Cause yeah. I think when I tried to do that, it was only gonna be like, I'm saying only because it's the grand scheme of things, but I think it was like four or $500 to upgrade, which a ticket, business class ticket is usually a couple grand at least. Yeah. So yeah. that in the, in the scheme of it is very cheap, but to do it online would be, you know, a few thousand extra. So yeah, a little, I, little hack. Yeah. That's gotta be, I mean, if you're already fly, flying, like, you know, uh, economy plus or something like that, if you're at the gate and they're like, look, do you have any business class? And like, I mean, it's what it's like $400. They wouldn't, weren't going to get anyway. So they like yep. might right. as well upgrade you for this. For they the want to fill those seats. Yeah. yeah they want to fill that seat. They want to get that, you know, bring that it. money. Do you yeah. think that that will vanish uh, out of flying soon? Just for like a carbon footprint sort of perspective? Do you think they'll go back to just one class for the entire flight? No, you know? because they make all their money on the premium cabins. Yeah. Yep. And then, well, a fucking, Fair I just enough. saw, I just saw like recently on a, a it wasn't Twitter, but uh, I recently saw that like they some flights are converting like their main cabin basically into one giant first class. Like, they're kind of getting rid of like economy and like the flights are like like seats are way spread out and yeah. can, like, fully recline and stuff like that because they're just like what are we going to do we got to incentivize people to like fly and to like spend money on on flights so they're they're kind of going the opposite way they're making flights actually more uh or some flights more luxurious i still uh, want just a a flight uh, like a plane full of beds like same amount of seats just <laughs> stack them stack them three high <laughs> super cramped super cozy but just so you can lie down i think if they had just lie flat planes would you be able to fit as many seats probably not probably i don't know if i'd want that like i feel like i I, would love it i would love it i like the option of sitting though because lying down it's i don't know if you guys have ever tried reading a book while lying fully uh horizontal it's a little difficult and your arms get tired uh I would like the ability to sit up on a plane and the ability to lie down, but I think if I had to choose between the two, I'd probably still choose sitting. I don't what, know. What if really? they had like what if vel- what if they had Velcro above you and you could like Velcro your Kindle up there? Yeah. Oh, that's a game changer. Yeah. If there yeah. was a, like Gavin, like you were saying, a screen or something and something to like attach something to so you could go hands free on it. Yeah, that that's a little different, but oh uh and like if my arms and getting stuff? tired if you, by arms getting tired you mean me getting tired yeah if i'm reading a book <laughs> lying completely down this guy's asleep in five minutes there's like no question about it um that's the moment yeah, i knew i was getting old when me holding peter, a book up in my bed my arms were like oh god i'm so tired I'm like oh. this is interesting peter h in the chat ba1 from london city to jfk it's an A318 with 32 business class seats and nothing else. What? Whoa. How is that efficient? <laughs> that's crazy. London that, that, City. That sounds I've like never a... flown from London City Airport. That's the one that's like right on the Thames. Like it's right, right, by the, the right by the Excel Center. I flew from it once. Before really? we did, yeah, before we did the first uh, RTX London, we were touring different venues in, uh, in London try to figure out where we're going to hold the event and we the excel center was the last venue we looked at and uh when we were finishing up the tour you could see london city airport from the excel center and i remember i was on one of the balconies and we were walking around with the people from the excel center and i saw the airport and i pointed at it and i, I asked like is that an airport right over there and they said yeah they, you know that's london city airport and i said and you can like fly to other countries from there and they said yeah it's a full full-fledged airport just you know smaller than the other ones i was like huh okay so then, like, I went and I looked on my phone, and I found I found a flight to Ireland for like seventy five bucks. I was like, "Oh, okay, ah. I'm gonna go to Dublin." <laughs> it's like you just go over to the airport. And it's like, 
you could just go from right there. It was like, it was faster to get to Dublin than to get in a taxi and go back to the hotel I was staying at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, a lot of this, like, uh, like London Luton is also quite like a, a big airport for like shorter haul flights, but it's not in London. Just it's in Luton. <laughs> it's called London Luton. I don't know. <laughs> I watched a, an I watch a lot of aviation videos, and I watched an interesting one uh, no. that like chronicled the history of all of the different airports in London and why there are so many. And uh, it was it was interesting because there are a ton of fucking airports in the, the London area, and Luton is one of the ones that they talk about. I guess they talk about like, how they all started and why there's so many there. Interesting. As I, I watch way too many videos about planes and airports. <laughs> do you, and do that you story think, is as follows. <laughs> do you yes. still think England sucks, Gus? No, I mean, I, I, I did not care for uh, London after the first time I went. I think a lot of that was because the first time I went, the exchange rate was over two to one. I think it was like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was like everything was just so fucking expensive. Yeah, it was like... It was a fucking nightmare. I, I remember uh, finding God. that hilarious because... Like I first met you, it was like 2004 in London, and uh, <laughs> you must have paid like 18 quid, which is probably like close to $40 for like a dog shit meal in this crappy yeah. place that we were at. <laughs> and it was raining, and you were tired, and, I, and you were like, this country sucks, and I just found that so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't just came ever... all this way and you hated it. Don't ever go when the exchange rate's terrible like that. It was so bad. <laughs> Everything was... Like you see the price, you're like oh that's not bad. Oh wait, that's in pounds. I have to pay, I have to pay more than double that in uh, yeah. U.S. dollars. And it just looked like some some sort of just dry dryish meat on a plate with some salad. Mm -hmm. One of, one of the best things I've ever tasted in my life was in London. One of the best meals I've ever had. What was it? Uh, uh, this place, uh, Dishoom. It's an Indian restaurant. Oh, uh, it was Jessica Vasami was talking to me about that place. Did yeah, we her? went. Yeah, I went with her and like Daniel and like a couple of like the like ha other Haunter like production folks. Um, yeah, by the way, Gavin and, yeah, uh, Jessica we, was in London. Uh, she was there on that production and you said that she had a weird hair line. I just want to remind you that you said that. Yes, you can never forget. <laughs> Didn't say weird, said it was cool. Carry on. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we went out to dinner to this like Indian place and like, this big group and they have a a uh a chop a like a little lamb chop that or uh a pork chop no it's a lamb chop lamb chop that is the one of the best things i have ever tasted i think about it to like frequently just like i cannot wait to get back there just to order and then like they marinate it for you know days or something like that but it is unbelievably good i cannot wait till i can travel again and taste that little yeah. chop it's it, so it, unbelievable little indian chop. food in england is actually excellent it's so yeah. good uh, and i don't know what happened in in translation between the uk and the us like indian food here is just it's not well, any good i mean we didn't colonize that subcontinent for you know several hundred years so i mean we have that it's true we don't, we, don't, we don't have that same connection you do Valid. but if you want melted cheese <laughs> over meat you come to the right place <laughs> you definitely have that in the bag over here fried cheesy meat right here america come on down it's we got great. plenty you want fried cheesy meat we've got fried cheesy meat at rtx at home i saw either the greatest or worst thing ever in my life on tiktok the other day where these people put tin foil down on their kitchen table, poured tortilla chips everywhere, and then essentially made a table size worth of nachos. So they put like a <laughs> bunch of queso, they put cilantro and salsa, like everything that would be on nachos essentially just like covered their entire dining table. Um, and it was like, oh, have a party and bring all these people over and everyone will just eat nachos off the table like fucking animals. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> just no hands allowed just face down into the nacho table yeah i was like there's nothing foul. more american than this right here <laughs> just a table full of nachos for everyone to grab as they enter the room okay how do you feel about this because because i i'm of the school when i like order nachos i want a an upsetting heaping plate of like chips and cheese and meat and beans and like i want it to be like this like this dome that, that food uh, as a whole just doesn't work 
It's flawed. I love nachos. It's deeply flawed. You nachos. can cover it in all this goo and like delicious stuff, but then to it's so it's it's so hit or miss like what kind of one you'll get like whether you'll get like a absolutely caked one that might be a bit soggy though or you get one that's more crispy but it has piss all on it that's it why you gotta work. do layers you gotta do layers so you put some chips down and then do some cover and then more chips down and then I, okay i've and... never had that that sounds yeah. perfect exactly that's because most places most places don't do it right they don't do the layers because it takes yeah. time and this is like we're, we're in a volume business here but yeah doing layers and then hitting like doing it really high heat really fast keeps it crispy and keeps from you getting soggy most people don't do it that way but then <laughs> like that's my that's my preferred like nacho method but then i hate i hate when you go to a place and it's like they're charging big heaping plate nacho prices for individual nacho like where it's like a plate of like eight chips that are like daintily dressed as nachos like it's got everything that's like what you gotta like, do you gotta <laughs> find the place chips. you gotta find the place that has nachos available as an appetizer for the table and get that for yourself that's what you do because that'll be a heaping amount because it's yeah, meant for multiple yeah. people <laughs> true the taco cabana started selling nachos with uh like uh, like a vegan meat substitute on them but it still has all the cheese and all the other non-vegan stuff it's like i don't understand why they would sell nachos like that like that they not should the be part vegetarian people... maybe not vegan then. i guess you know... i guess maybe that's the concession but just it's just weird to me that they would take out one ingredient but not the rest of them are you still vegan by the way um mostly i uh, I have cheat meals on the weekend, but during okay. the week, uh, plant-based. Gotcha. I mean, the, I got... the shorter answer is no. <laughs> but... Touche. So no. Uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a weekday vegan. Um, I've, I've had, I had the, uh, the Taco Cabana Beyond Meat, like, beef taco. Oh, did you? Yeah. It's, it's really good. Like, for a, like, when, when you want that, like, because it's it's a very distinct like kind of fast food crumbly beef kind of cafeteria style taco that only those kind of tacos taste like but occasionally that's all you want in the world it knocks it out of the park with that flavor so if you want like a crispy beef taco that tastes like beef and doesn't have any beef in it i'd say it's a pretty it's a pretty close fact similar what, what I, I, i'm going to make a guilty confession to you andrew yeah <laughs> I've, I, I've wanted that flavor sometimes that you're talking about like that greasy almost like cafeteria style uh, beef taco yeah uh you can buy like t make your own taco bell at home kits where <laughs> it's like it gives you the taco shell it gives you the salsa and it gives you the spices you just supply like the cheese lettuce and beef yourself uh so i'll buy those and i'll buy like impossible uh beef or like impossible burger stuff from yeah. heb and i'll just make tacos like that it's like yeah it's like i'm making taco bell at home but it's like sometimes <laughs> that's just what you want you just want that that cheap you know greasy yeah taco tip flavor and yeah yeah it's good it, it absolutely slaps no it's 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 incredible like sometimes that's all that will do like it's it's not good it's not good per se you don't need it to, like yeah. it just it goes hard and that's what? exactly what you want and nothing what else is the place. hardest trash or like fast food that to replicate at home like is it extremely difficult to make a big mac from just ingredients no no not at all we've actually done I that before it. um yeah but did, how good was, like i know you can you can get like the same stuff but, but uh, did it taste like a big mac or was it like eh, it did similar. i actually also think eric badur uh if you're listening i think did we do that at your place didn't barbara make uh big macs one time or we had like some burger that she recreated that tasted just like the fast food burger. No, I don't. I don't, I don't think that was did. me. Yeah, you don't think that was you? I'm pretty sure that was that was Barbara. I don't think, unless I just made some. Oh, I made some hamburgers one time, and then I guess maybe <laughs> you're just saying they were very good. Thank you. <laughs> it's possible. I maybe I'm confusing to... it with someone else. No, I think I wasn't trying to recreate anything. I think I just made some hamburgers that were very good. So okay, that, that sounds. I, I'm right excited too. for all this to be over, so more people can come over and eat hamburgers. Can I come? Right? Some, you're, yeah, you're sure. Some come burgies? on over and eat some hamburgers. Can I bring some raccoons? You can bring some raccoons. You can bring some raccoons, and they can eat hamburgers also. Nice. Wow! Look <laughs> at them. They can't wait to eat raccoons out of my grease trap. <laughs> yeah, uh, Big Macs are actually pretty easy to recreate because it's just like you need the the sauce to be right, but then it's just essentially pickles and lettuce and cheese. Um, yeah, it's just pretty easy. I feel like I feel like anything. Uh, 
I feel like anything fried to a very specific degree is a little bit harder to do because like you need like a deep fryer or an air fryer and like even an air fryer can't quite do what like a deep fryer yeah. will do just in terms of like really imbuing something with the like really crispy flavor like i made a couple of like chick-fil-a sandwich facsimiles at my place using an air fryer and it's come like it's been hit or miss like it's delicious but it definitely doesn't like definitely doesn't hit that like specific flavor i might need um, to hit you up andrew about this air fryer because I, I just bought an air fryer to try out some cooking via that and if you have yeah, ideas bad times? of bad times is it a good air fryer it's great i love it um i've made one meal with it though so it's not a whole <laughs> lot to base off of i made salmon and vegetables in it and it turned out delicious so would recommend so far salmon salmon definitely really good in there i would say also you can do nachos in there pretty pretty <gasps> well too because it's that hot air and that circulation mm -hmm. will like crisp up yeah. them chips it keeps them from getting soggy will crisp up them chips a little bit more and melt things a little and yeah. melt things a little yeah can do Dude, that sogginess in. is just the worst thing that can happen to any food cereal like bread a, a tuna sandwich no it just goes disgraceful when it gets soggy. i'm okay with soggy want, pasta like... <laughs> How's pasta joke, but... soggy though? I, it, because that's the way you're supposed to eat it. Is what it's wet. It's not hard uh, cracked pasta. It's cooked and s technically soggy. I was making a stupid joke. I Continue would... talking. Well, I, I, I I say say what, what, what about we Weetabix? <laughs> Weetabix should be soggy. Uh, Weetabix need to be. They need to start absorbing, but then you want to really use that big spoon to scarf them down because if it gets too soggy, they just disintegrate into like milky porridgey crap. Is this is this is is Weetabix like uh, like grape nuts like where it's it's <laughs> what people it's like grape, grape nuts. nuts. Grape nuts is also a no. cereal that's like I like grape nuts is a cereal that when dry uh, could be used as like um, uh, musket ammunition and then when, <laughs> when soaked in milk for for a time turns into overnight oats like it just like and there's like a window you have to eat grape nuts in where <laughs> you know <laughs> like. <laughs> You know, like the big uh, shredded wheat that are like this big? Yeah. Uh, wheat mix is similar in size. Uh, it's not like a shredded wheat. It's more of a Bix. <laughs> it's the same <laughs> shit. Nailed it's like, it. <laughs> yeah, okay. They're, they're, they're big fat. You can fit like two in a bowl, three if uh. you're feeling pretty hungry. What happens if you put them in the air fryer, though? Then what? <laughs> Maybe you can unsoggy. A Weetabix in an air dry, in an air fry. Maybe, maybe. <gasps> Bring it back to life. I'm, I'm excited that we did a answer. podcast without talking about spoons. That would have been a whole month of spoons, and I'm glad we avoided it. You know what's um, funny about that, actually, Gavin? <laughs> is I, I brought these just in case the conversation came up, but I brought an actual <laughs> teaspoon <laughs> and tablespoon <laughs> measurement. <laughs> Just to show how fucking insane you guys are for wanting to eat out of this amount of spoon. I'm not eating Th out of a measuring teaspoon. But this is a teaspoon. This <laughs> the is what you're looking at. Look, look how small that is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm looking. You, I'm looking at those two things. Oh, good God. <laughs> I'm looking at those two measuring spoons and I, you know, I cook a lot and I make stuff with, you know, that require like precise measurements. But if like, honestly, I don't think I've ever made anything that like, had I thrown in one of those and not the other would have ruined the entire thing. No, like, how much, not. how much fucking difference are those two uh, spoons from each other that like, it's, it's going to kill whatever you're vanilla, making. Vanilla extract. Mm. Okay. Maybe. Point conceded. You're absolutely yeah. right. That, it's it, 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 it <laughs> Never mind. I I step away from this. I I I see the four year. You are in correct. Fairness, that's all I've got. I can't think of any other food where that would be the case. These go maybe together. some sort of uh, obscene Salt, spice maybe? oil. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, like I would say anything that's got like I would say an extract, just because it's such a unbelievably powerful. Yeah, it's like flavor. so concentrated. So Bob, concentrated. Put the spoons insane. down. Of, We're out, done with out, spoons. Out of context, you sitting there holding all those spoons, you look insane. <laughs> What well, these spoons? It's crazy. There is no spoon. Well, everyone was just saying that my big spoon was like fucking massive, and I think it's because it's it's really shallow. Like it's wide, but it's shallow. But this is essentially the same. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, guys, this is volume. 
I know we're not talking about spoons necessarily, but can we get don't the, play the graphic? Spoon would you use intro just one time? Just, just one once. Time. Just once. What kind I of think, I think Andrew should see it. No. <laughs> what kind of spoon would you use? God, I love that song so much. Oh, I love that song so much. Oh, it has a, it's good. It has a very like grunge kind of 90s like down 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 like yeah it's got that feel i like it <laughs> an unplugged electric guitar <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, I can't believe we came back um speaking of kitchen stuff my kettle broke the other day i have an electric kettle to boil water and it boiled the water i left it on the counter then i went back to get more and when i picked it up like water just started pouring out of the bottom of it like <laughs> oh shit yeah i was like what the hell i had to like run over to the sink and uh and dump it in the sink so I had that, I've had that Jeez. thing, I think, for eight years. It finally went out. Damn. So so uh, I, I started trying to shop for a new one. I was like, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna start reading reviews. And I found one review from this person on Amazon. Let me see if I can find it here real fast. This person, I, 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 reading Amazon reviews is... Infuriating. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, <laughs> it's, it's a window into the insanity of people, right? It's like yeah. everyone looks human, but then you read a review on Amazon, you're like... This person only physically appears human. So you know the way reviews work on Amazon, right? It's like you rate things on a scale of one to five stars. Yep. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna read the first like three sentences of this review. The title is Heats Water Quickly. It's a four-star review, by the way. I really like this kettle. I wish I could give this 4.8 stars, but we're only allowed whole numbers. I would have given it five <laughs> stars except for one small detail. I wish the kettle temperature would start lower than 170 as I like my hot cocoa around 150, but it does have a digital display so I can catch lower temperatures if I stand and watch it. I was like, Jesus Christ. What's up with this what an four insane point person. eight tangent? Then like, why not just give it the five stars? Why don't you give it four stars? And then, I mean, I can understand wanting more precise temperature control, but. Well, in that case, just get a kettle with different temperatures. Buttons, right. Which right. exist. I was just so baffled. I was like, this person must be really fun to hang out with at a party. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I always hate when people review things about products that have nothing to do with, like, the product's functionality or quality or anything like that. Well, like, like it arrived broken. Or, yeah. like, I, I, or, yeah, or, like, oh, it had something. I guess, like, I could understand the justification. People like, oh, it arrived and it was, like, ripped or something like that. But it's also, like, well, that was just your case. And you should probably take it up with the actual vendor itself yeah. rather than write an actual product that exists poorly because of a shipping malfunction or whatever it was, you know? No, yeah, I, absolutely. I, go ahead, Andrew. I, I was going to say, uh, in the Amazon reviews, and I would say also the like questions and answers about products is just the absolute, it is an island of misfit toys. It is where like, humanity's uh, just most depraved psychos go to uh, interact with each other. Yep. Because there'll be stuff like, there'll be questions for products like, huh, like, does this come in silver? And then someone will have answered it, I don't know, I didn't buy it. <laughs> like, yep. yep. What the fuck is going on? Like, I remember first that of would all, happen. Sorry, go for it. No, it's just like, well, first of all, does it come in silver? You can look, just scroll up <laughs> yeah. a little bit and you'll find if it comes in silver. But then yeah, someone... You had, you, you had to pass that information to get to the question asking. Yes. I mean, maybe some people think that if you see a question, it's rude not to answer it. Like, you <laughs> you just have to answer even if you don't know the answer. Like, you're being asked in real life. Yeah, I don't like know. it was directed at them. I, yeah, it kind of reminds me of, like, a lot of the times in the past when we would uh, be going somewhere or hosting some event in some city and we would post about it on the Rushi site or on Twitter and we'd get people responding being like, oh, I don't live there. Or, <laughs> or oh, I can't come because I don't live there. It's like, okay, I'm sorry. Like, I don't really understand the response that people are looking to receive for that. I'm just like, oh, you could travel for it like i don't know what people are expecting it's always interesting so, to me for that kind of thing on a, on a somewhat related note to that barbara i remember years ago i used to answer all of the email that we would get at Rich Teeth, all the email from uh from people from viewers and from you know uh, people who are in the community and we had just done an event i think we had just gone to rtx no we had just gone to rvbto 
and like the a week or two after I came back, I got an email from someone that was like, "Hey, are you ever gonna do an event in Toronto?" And I wrote back like, "Hey, uh, we were actually just there. Oh no, it was it was Fan Expo. It was Fan Expo we had gone. To. Oh, okay, it's like we were actually like just huge there. Event. We were at, yeah, we we're at Fan Expo. Uh, told him told him where it was. It's like we'll, we we'll probably be there again next year. Uh, sorry you missed us. And then that person wrote back like, "Yeah, but that's really far from me. I live in the suburbs. I want you to do something closer to me." Yeah, I, like, well, I, I mean, <laughs> I went to another country already. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I went 99.9% .9 of the way there. You could meet, I mean, we're not going to do something in your neighborhood. You can meet me in the last 0.1%. I will never forget one of my favorite emails we've ever gotten. This is back in the day when Gus, you and I used to co-direct RTX together. And so we would also get all the questions that people would email in. And I think this was RTX 2012 or 2013. We got an email from someone saying, hey, I'm coming from Florida. Does the ticket price for RTX include airfare and hotel? And I didn't know how to respond to that in a way where I wasn't being mean about it <laughs> to say, maybe your $60 RTX ticket does not include the cost of a flight and hotel for a weekend. Like, I didn't know how to say that without coming across as a complete bitch. <laughs> I mean, the only way that that could ever be possible is if every single attendee lived in the same place. <laughs> yeah. Just get a shuttle out there. <laughs> what? Well, luckily, you don't have to worry about airfare and hotel this year at RTX. Yeah, <laughs> RTX at home. You already have your own home <laughs> or wherever you're staying to to sleep in. You don't have to pay someone else. Uh, it's kicking off tomorrow with first night. It's gonna be September fifteenth to twenty fifth, and uh, we have a free trial. So tomorrow, first night is available for everyone. Uh, some panels are for first members only. If you'd like. Uh, trial. What was that code again? Was it RTX trial? RTX you trial. A, RTX trial. You can uh, get a uh, a trial first membership uh, if you want to check it out. That's a limited time offer, and it doesn't have to be a new account. It could be an existing RT account. You could even have had first at one point if you just want to get it again, just for a temporary uh, trial, just for RTX. Check it out. Uh, anyway, RTX coming up at home, September fifteenth to twenty fifth. Uh, we're kicking it off There's with first night tomorrow evening. What's up? Going to be, I'm sure you guys will hear this uh, many times throughout the event, but hot damn, we have some fucking cool ass merch dropping throughout the next few weeks for RTX. Some stuff is RTX exclusive, some stuff will be available until it's sold out. Um, but you definitely want to keep an eye on what's going on in the store. We also just dropped a link to a very cool thing for Coop. Uh, coop or coop I think is the link. There's, it is. oh my god. There's some cool fucking shit happening in the next couple I, weeks. I got bummed out today because like some of our social media accounts and people at the company were tweeting about like the cool stuff that's like being teased. And uh I think Achievement Hunter posted a gif of me being like, eh, eh. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. you know, we know what's going on and you don't. Except I don't know. Like I'm looking at myself. <laughs> Be like, uh? but it's like I don't know what the I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I'm bummed out now. I'm, it's like my, it's like I'm making fun of myself. You're <laughs> mocking yourself. Yeah. Also, uh, going back, why is it, Gus, that you were in charge of all the email when you are the most antisocial person who has ever worked at the it's, company? It's because when I was uh, when that started, no, the, that division of labor started when I was in Puerto Rico, so I couldn't help with uh, filming. So I tried to help with all the other non-filming stuff. Ah. So that's why I, I used to, I handled all of our email for years because of that. I don't remember I had all of my at the apartment in Buda. I had all of my favorite emails on the wall printed out next to me. <laughs> you remember I had that wall of emails just off yeah. to my right. I feel the like there was like a <laughs> like a different level of dumb back then. I don't know if that it was maybe bad. people it was bad. Dumb. It was like you've got people being confused just about things in general, but also like. People were new at the internet as a whole, so they were like <laughs> turbo extra dumb. <laughs> <laughs> turbo extra dumb. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good times. Yeah, there's some right. uh, there's there's some there's some hot stuff dropping. I'm I'm excited. <clears throat> hot stuff. Yeah, and uh, uh, like we mentioned, first night, which is tomorrow, that's where a lot of the announcements will be. So uh, you definitely want to check it out. It's like the first thing, big kickoff, big keynote. Check it out, uh, September fifteenth at five p.m. Central Time. And yes, uh, I've seen in chat a couple times people asking about the stuff we're wearing. This hat, this shirt, Gus's shirt, they're all going to be things hey. that drop for RTX. This is a corduroy hat with a leather strap in the back. Very nice, very comfortable. Um, there's also some stuff 
Oh, coily behind me. Oops, who put that mm -hmm. there? Oh, what? What? But me? Why, why no. does birch drop? Why has it got a drop? Because it's falling from the heavens, Gavin. <laughs> That's an okay. excellent uh. reply. <laughs> that, was, that was quick. That was very fast. Quick. Yeah, that was locked and loaded. But no, I don't right. know, actually. I don't know where the merch drop kind of lingo came from. Never, Gus, uh... are you going to sponsor RTX at home as a whole or just this podcast? Uh, Gusco is uh, still in last minute negotiations, uh, <laughs> so I, I, can't, I can't discuss it at the moment. All right. uh, but speaking of locked and loaded, uh, it's about time to wrap this up. Uh, <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, hope you enjoy RTX. It's starting right away. Uh, if you're not watching this live, <laughs> if you're watching this taped, it's already on. Go uh, join, join us, rtxevent.com. All right. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys again uh, next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.